Hey everybody. Today we're talking about chi-squared testing for homogeneity in R. A chi-squared test for homogeneity is useful when you have two samples of a categorical variable and you're interested in the question of whether those samples might potentially have come from identical populations. Ident identical insofar as that categorical variable is concerned. I'm going to work through a couple of examples. Here's the first one. We have um, two random samples of students at two universities and we've just asked them sort of what college are they in in that university? Is their overall field of study, does it fall under the College of Business, Engineering, Liberal Arts, or Nursing? And obviously the results from these two universities um, were different. They were not identically the same as we would expect if the two universities were exactly the same. The question is whether or not the differences are enough to make us conclude, let me say that a little differently. The question is whether or not the differences in the sample are enough to give us evidence to conclude that, the, that there might actually be a difference in the population. So of course we are going to be using a chi-squared test for homogeneity here, and the big idea is this. If the two samples do in fact come from identical populations, then the proportions in both groups should be the same as the overall proportions in the sample. So here I've expanded that contingency table just a little bit, added some margins at the bottom. So for instance, there are 105 individuals that um, are in business in the two samples combined. And that comes out to be 17.8% of the overall um, number of people in these two samples. So um, if we're gonna test a null hypothesis that the population proportions are the same, in both of these two different proportion, these both of these two different categories, A and B, then we can just run a goodness of fit test on either one of those groups using those pooled proportions. So we could just run a goodness of fit test on University A and that sample that we have there using the percentages at the bottom, 17.8%, 13.9%, and so on. I'm going to switch over to R now and we'll do it there. The good news is that in R and in many other um, statistical packages, you don't need to just manually run a goodness of fit test. You don't have to compute these proportions or anything like that. R will do that for you. So let's go over to R. I've already loaded up tidyverse as usual. I've also loaded up the ISLR2 package. I'll say a couple more words about that in a minute and set my um, graphing theme to minimal. In these next few lines, I've just loaded in the data. I loaded in the data from that table as a, a vector and then made that into a matrix, um, added some column names and row names. That is um, optional for the next things I'm going to do, but it does make the table look a little bit nicer. You can see that down here on the lower right. That table should be identical to the one that I had on the previous slide. I have a whole video on contingency tables in R. I'll throw a link up top to that if, um, if these commands aren't perfectly comfortable for you. It might be worth taking a look at that. So the command I really need here is just chi-squared.test of that table. I'm just literally plugging the table into the chi-squared test for homogeneity. You can see that we have three degrees of freedom here. That's one less than the number of categories in the variable. Remember, the perspective on a chi-squared test for homogeneity is that we have one variable of interest broken down across two samples. So the number of degrees of freedom is one less than the categories in the variable, as opposed to the, the thing representing the different samples. The p-value here is 0.002. Um, that's a pretty small p-value. The null hypothesis is that there is no um, difference between these two populations insofar as that categorical variable um, is concerned. Here, a small p-value indicates that that hypothesis is not plausible. We have some evidence here to conclude that in fact, the overall populations at these two different universities are different. A bit more specifically, if in fact the overall populations were the same, we would get data like this, departing from that, uh, um, that expectation by this amount or by more, only about two-tenths of a percent of the time. That's, that would be pretty surprising if that happens, so we're comfortable saying that it probably didn't. I want to do a second example now. Um, I want to use the car seats data set. This data set's included in the ISLR2 package, 
That's a package of data sets supporting the excellent book Introduction to Statistical Learning with Applications in R. It includes 400 rows, each one's an observation of a store selling a certain brand of car seat. And we have a lot of different variables here. The two that I'm going to be interested in, and I guess the one that I'm really interested in, is shelving location. Good, bad, or medium. And I'm interested in how it breaks down according to whether or not the store was located in an urban location or not. Um, I'm viewing this as two different samples. I have a sample of car seats sold at urban locations and another sample sold at non-urban locations. So shelf location is kind of the real variable here. The big difference between this and the last example is that in this case, we don't just have a contingency table and we don't just input the data to get one. Instead, we have actual data in a tidy, long format. Every row here is an observation, a store selling car seats. So um, before we're able to do a chi-squared test on this, we actually need to produce this table. So I'm gonna do that. I think I'll save the table as T this time, being really creative with my variable names today. And the two variables that I want are car seats dollar urban and car seats dollar shelf location. And then let's print that out to see it. Okay, so in this sample of 400 stores, we have 22 in locations that are not considered urban for which the shelving location for this brand of car seat was considered to be bad. Let's go ahead and run our chi-squared test on this. It's exactly the same syntax as before. In this case, we have two degrees of freedom in our variable of interest here. There are three possible values, so there's two degrees of freedom. That's one less, k minus one. Our p-value came out to be about 25%. It's a pretty substantial p-value, actually. So if, in fact, these two samples came from identical populations, then we would still get data like this a little more than one time in four. So not a surprising result at all. We should not draw any particular conclusions about the differences between these two samples and the shelving locations in the larger populations. Before I wrap up, I want to do a visualization of this. I want to see um, a bar chart that's going to show both of these pieces of information. So I'm going to do a ggplot on the car seats data set. I only need to type it once. And um, now I'm going to specify some aesthetics. So I want things broken down by urban or non-urban. So I'm going to put that on the x-axis. And then I'm going to show the main variable of interest with a fill. So in this case, fill should be shelf location. And I want a bar chart. It's going to be geom bar. Reminder that geom bar is useful when you have a data set in a tidy format where each row represents one observation. Geom bar is going to go through and count the number of observations in each group. As opposed to geom call, which is useful when you have a column in your data set that actually gives you the counts. And then R will go through and just read off that, um, those counts from the column and make bars of those heights. Before I execute this, let's put in a, um, an accessible color palette, scale fill brewer, at least more accessible. Let's do dark too. Okay, great. So we can see um, for both urban and non-urban locations how the sh um, shelving locations break down. This default stacked bar chart is really stressing the overall distributions of the urban variable. So here you can see the total counts for stores that are not considered even urban versus those that are. And then within each of those groups, you can kind of see the proportions here. Um, for the different shelving locations. Now, um, for our present purposes, where we're interested in comparing the proportions of shelving locations, this isn't really the most descriptive. Um, the, the proportions kind of look even, but I have to mentally scale up this left bar in order to, to see that. If there were small differences here, I wouldn't be able to tell at all. Fortunately, there are other options for our bar chart. I think I'll just show two of them. A lot of times I think the dodge position looks the nicest. So here we're really getting um, two different bar charts side by side. 
what this is doing is it is um, still breaking down the variable by urban versus non-urban and then doing counts within each of those groups. I have sort of the same issues with this plot as the last one. Even if it does look nice, it doesn't, um, it doesn't help me that much in imagining the different proportions within these two groups, urban versus non-urban. For that purpose, I want to do one more plot, and the position I want is going to be fill. And for me, this is actually kind of the least attractive of the three plots. If you look at it, it's got this kind of boxy shape. And in fact, it's fully suppressing the counts within the two groups for the urban variable. You can't tell at all from looking at this plot whether or not you have more or less in, um, stores in each one of those two categories. What you can see very clearly are the relative proportions in this data set in these two groups. So for instance, in the um, urban um, stores, you can see there's just a little bit over 50% that have medium shelving locations. And in the non-urban stores, the percentage is just a little bit higher. So although this may not be the most attractive graph, the variable of interest here, or the relationship of interest, is most visible to us. Um, remember, though, in the end, although these proportions might look very slightly different on this plot, the result of our chi-squared test showed that the, purport, the difference in these proportions in these samples should not be considered statistically significant and should not be considered to be indicative of larger trends in the population.